Okay, so I'm gonna do this with what we call a continuous shot. There's gonna be no cuts, because we want you to see that this is all done in one shot. We're not trying to fake you out. So she's gonna start wide, and she's gonna move in so you can see the ember forming in the notch. Go ahead, tow the notch now, it's really filling up. So I'm going to be very careful until I see that glowing red there. Did you see that? There we go. Now that I know I have a glowing ember, I can remove it from the notch. There we go. Okay. This is why we keep our friends close and our tinder bundles closer. <laughs> Still continuous shot, no cuts. Woo! in that bird's nest. Now here we go. Now at first I got to blow very gentle. It's just us. I don't want to blow it apart. There we go. So there it is. I can't wait to show you how to do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you a little about the, about the pieces and how everything works. And then I'm gonna show you how to do both, how to gather all this, how to make it all with a little more than a little multi-tool like this. So with the bow and drill, it's named that because it's mostly these two pieces doing the work, right? Here is our bow and here is our drill. What makes this the only type of friction fire I would consider even close to a viable survival technique is you don't have to be super specific about your materials. Indeed, you don't even have to know what species you're using. You're basing this on the material properties. This string here, twisting the drill around it, gives us some mechanical advantage. Using this bow to turn the drill gives us more RPMs than we could ever do by hand, like with the hand drill. So this will give us thousands of RPMs. This drill is going to turn at thousands of rotations per minute when I spin the drill. And because I have a hand hold like this, again, bow, bow string, drill, hand hold. And now because I have a hand hold like this, I can put my body weight on this. I don't have to use my arm strength to lean on the drill. Come on in a little close here, show these parts. So I don't have to use my body weight, uh, I don't have to use my arm strength to push on the drill. I can anchor this and lean down. So I can use all nearly 200 pounds of my body weight on the drill and get thousands of RPMs. That's why when you saw me turn this, I got ember so quickly and smoke so quickly. Of course, this is my job, so I'm used to doing this. So of course, by this stage, I can do it well. However, these materials and this technique is just so important. So here we have the baseboard, also called a fireboard or hearth. You'll hear all three of those names. I like to use baseboard because it's pretty descriptive. It really lets you know what part of the bow drill set it is. Now the way this works is the hard drill goes through the much softer baseboard. We want this drill to be much harder than the board. So as we put our body weight on it and it spin, it drills through and it creates that dust. The dust fills the notch here. And as the notch gets full and the dust is all carbonized from the heat that made it and it's pinned against the red hot spinning drill and stuck in that heat chamber, it ignites into the ember that you saw. So I'm using this branch as the simplest form of an example of a bow. So I'm using a dead branch because a green branch can 
flex and that will steal from the force we're trying to use on our friction fire. We want enough bend, I'm gonna pull out my trusty plumb bob here, that when we put our string across, we have more than two inches from the top of the curve to the tip of the string. We don't want too straight of a branch, and that's because when I tie this on, I can control the tension of the bow with a bit of grip there i can make it more tight or just leave it as is uh, depending on my needs okay so it just has to be strong enough to not bend or break easily and with enough curve to leave at least two inches between the tip of the arc and the string to allow for a little bit of tension work with the grip now on this end i have a section where i can tie my string on here right and that's great that'll hold it but this end i don't so i'll have to carve a notch here to hold it as far as the length goes i want it go ahead and pull out here i want it as long as my arm go ahead and show this so i'm gonna hold my arm forward i want it from my shoulder there to the center of my hand can you see that okay good that's what i'm looking for with the length okay that's really optimum so I'm gonna trim this to size, put my notches in, and we'll show you how to string it up. Now, I don't wanna to go too deep to ruin the integrity of the stick. And I don't wanna to be too close to the end where it could break off just deep enough to hold the string there. Can't slide out. So I can show you how to make string, but the easiest way to get your bow done is to just use a shoe or boot lace like this. So I can take this off, get my fire made, put it right back on and be good to go. As you get good at making natural cordages from plant fibers and such, I'm really good at the bow drill. You could practice using materials like that, but for now, this will be your best bet. So here I, here I have a bit of a rabbit ears, so I can hook this around here. Just gonna twist this around a bit. Now, to tie this, let's make sure you can, can you see the whole bow here? See the whole bow. So, I'm just gonna get the string about straight. Okay, not tight. I don't want it to sag like that. I'm gonna pull it pretty much straight there, just about straight. Wrap it, wrap the string through the notch there. Okay, and then just around like so. No problem there. One. Two, just a little overhand knot. Okay. And make sure this isn't just dangling at the end. Now you may have to tie and retie this several times to get it just right. In my opinion, it's about the hardest piece to find because that's the strictest requirement. It's the one that we want to take the most time on. So it has to be pretty darn straight. We want it no thicker or not much thicker than our thumb and no thinner than our forefinger. We'd like it to be at least as long as our hand. So we have a, a long branch like this, about seven feet tall. We only need one section of this branch to meet those requirements. Now, if I can get it about two to three inches longer than my hand, that's perfect. So this section right here looks pretty straight to me, close to thumb size. 
which I like. See this lower section here? Good. And now what's important about this is when you see the bark here, Stage. So we